Namaskaram. In this session, we will derive the well known wave equation. Wave problem is a fundamental engineering problem. There are many versions of wave problem with the different boundary conditions. In this course, we will discuss the basic wave problem. These are the solutions of previous homework. Uh, this is the statement of our problem. Consider a tightly stretched elastic string of length L and fixed at endpoints O and P. Let string be released from its equilibrium position OP. So this is the equilibrium position, okay, x-axis, and allowed to vibrate. We have to find the displacement yxt of the point x on the string at time t from its equilibrium position. That is, we have to find this height. This is our uh, yxt. And it is clear that this displacement function y depends two things. One is distance from the origin, that is our x, and other is time. Okay, that's why this is yxt. That is, we have to predict the position of the string accurately with respect to time. If you choose another point here, then the corresponding displacement is this side. This side is the corresponding displacement y. Right. As I mentioned in the introduction, we consider a simple wave problem. So we will solve this problem considering many assumptions. But this is the foundation for relaxed wave problems. So the first assumption is string is perfectly elastic. That means no resistance to bending. The tension caused by stretching is large compared to the weight of the string. So the force due to gravity is negligible. That means the motion of the string completely controlled by tension. Okay. Third one, mass per unit length is constant. Let it be m. Next one, there is only transverse vibration. That means the motion takes place entirely in one plane and each point on the string moves at right angle to the equilibrium position. The advantage of this assumption is there is no horizontal movement. Each point moves only vertically. Okay. The fifth assumption, the displacement yxt is small compared to the length. So the stretching of the string is negligible. That means M remains same after stretching. Okay, now our entire problem is set. Our aim is to find the displacement yxt. There are two steps for solving this problem. Step 1. We will find a partial differential equation which satisfies the displacement. Step 2. We will find the solution by solving this PD. The, this is the outline of step 1. That means this is the outline of this video. We evaluate the force acting on this small portion AB in two different ways. One is using tension. Other is using Newton's second law. Then by equating these two forces, we will get a required partial differential equation. That is called wave equation. Consider the forces acting on a small portion AB of the string. Okay, we already assume that uh, string is perfectly elastic. So the tension is tangential to the string at every point. So at A, this is the tension and at B, this red vector is the tension. Okay. T and TB are vectors. And TA is the tension at A and TB is the tension at B. And this theta A is the angle between x axis and the vector TA. And similarly, theta B is the angle between x axis and uh, vector x axis and vector TB. That is, they are the angle between string and uh, x axis. Also, we assume that there is only transverse motion. So the net horizontal force due to tension is zero because there is no horizontal motion. So net horizontal force due to tension is zero. For calculating the net horizontal force, 
we have to calculate the horizontal components of these two tangential forces then consider the algebraic sum first we consider this vector this is our tv and this is the horizontal component of tv that denoted by hp then we know that this is 90 90 degree so and this angle is theta b right so how to find hv we know that what about cos theta b adjacent side by hypotenuse so adjacent is hb by tb so this implies the horizontal component the horizontal component at b is equal to tb cos theta b right this is the horizontal component at b and similarly the horizontal component uh, horizontal component at a is nothing that is ta cos theta a right so this is the horizontal component at a and it is clear that one component is this direction other is in opposite direction if you take this as positive then this become minus so what is the algebraic sum of these horizontal components the algebraic sum means tb cos theta b minus ta cos theta a this is the algebraic sum of the forces on ab it should be zero because there is no horizontal motion right so we get tb cos theta b minus ta cos theta a equal to zero okay this implies what this implies ta cos theta a equal to tb cos theta b whatever be the point these two quantities are always same so we denoted this by a constant t so what is ta so we can solve ta and tb from these two equations so ta equal to t by cos theta a and tb is equal to t by cos theta b we denote these two equations by one next we are going to evaluate the vertical force acting on the small portion ab due to tension by method one so here we assume that string is moving in upward direction the vertical components of ta and tb are ta sin theta a and tb sin theta b so you can easily find these two components similar to our previous case for example this is the vertical component at b this is our tension so if you take the sin theta b what happened sin theta b this is equal to opposite by hypotenuse the vertical component at b by tension at b the vertical component equal to tb sin theta b okay that is tb sin theta b similarly the vertical component at a is ta sin theta a and it is clear that vertical component at b is upward direction and vertical component at a is downward direction so this is the net vertical force on ab so the algebraic sum the net sum of vertical force acting on ab is tb sin theta b minus ta sin theta a this minus sign is due to the vertical component at A is in downward direction. So consider the net force that is Tb sin theta b minus Ta sin theta a that is equal to T by cos theta b sin theta b minus T by cos theta a sin theta a. We are replacing this Tb by T by cos theta b and Ta by T by cos theta a from our equation number 1. And this sin theta by cos theta become tan theta and T is common take outside so this become T times tan theta b minus tan theta a. Next, we are going to replace this tan theta in terms of y x t. Okay, and this equation become T times what is tan theta b? Tan theta b is partial dy by dx at x plus delta x, and tan theta a is partial dy by dx at x. Geometrically, what is tan theta b? Tan theta b is the slope of the tangent at b. Okay. And we know that equation of this curve is y x t. What is the slope at b in terms of derivative of y? That is derivative of y with respect to x. So here there are two variables. So we consider partial derivative. So partial dy by dx at x plus delta x. That's why we are replacing this tan theta b by partial dy by dx at x plus delta x. And similarly, you can replace this tan theta a using derivative that is partial dy by dx at x okay so this is our equation number two so 
the net vertical force in terms of derivative next we are going to calculate the same vertical force using newton's second law so the net vertical force on ab is mass into acceleration so this is our net vertical force that is equal to mass into acceleration so here mass is m into delta x because delta x is the length of the string on this portion ab so and m is the linear density of the string so the total mass of the string on the interval x to x plus delta x is m into delta x so this is the mass of the string and this is the acceleration of the string second derivative with respect to t so that is partial dy square by dt square so this is nothing newton's second law force is equal to mass into acceleration we denote this equation by 3 from 2 and 3 we get the left side is our equation number 3 and this is our equation number 2 okay we can equate these two both are same so this expression becomes like this ultimately we have to find the displacement at a particular point x okay with respect to x and time so to find the displacement at a particular point delta x should be very close to zero so assume that delta x is tends to zero and what about this expression this is the rate of change of first derivative of y with respect to x okay that is second derivative of y with respect to x okay so if delta x tends to zero this expression become this expression become second derivative of y with respect to x square so our displacement function y satisfies the differential equation partial dy square by dt square equal to t by m partial dy square by dx square okay so if you let delta x tends to zero then the equation become partial dy square by dt square equal to t by m partial dy square by dx square so the con as a conclusion our displacement function yxc satisfies this equation which is called uh, wave equation and we are replacing this t by m by c square because the tension and mass is always positive so t by m is positive that's why we are replacing t by m by a positive number c square okay so this equation is called wave equation in next session we will find the displacement yxt by solving this wave equation okay thank you